right. Well, good morning, people. Uh, we, you know, glad that you actually uh, made it to this awesome webinar that we have here today. Uh, my name, for those that don't know me, uh, is Edward Lavilla. I am the co-founder of Eagle Tech Corp and CTO. And I mean, I'm excited to have uh, Brian uh, from Checkpoint. I mean, we have the privilege of having one of the top evangelists. Uh, I, I mean, he said he's one of the top. I would say he's the top evangelist at Checkpoint. And if you have been- in We're the all the top. There's many of us, we're all the top. <laughs> and uh, if you have been in the cybersecurity world for a while, you've probably seen already uh, uh, Brian, because uh, I mean, he does amazing uh, podcasts and, and video casts. Uh, he is a workforce security expert for Checkpoint. He's part of the Checkpoint Pandemic War Room that he's gonna tell us a little bit about that later. And then uh, since uh, he, that war room is being focusing uh, after the COVID-19 uh, situation and pretty much focusing on the security uh, of the remote working with 25 plus years, uh, but you're not that old, Brian. Uh, no, I'm not. I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm only 26, so All I right. was born with these talents. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing in cybersecurity. Okay. So you you are also part of the CTO of Checkpoint, the CTO office, right? Yes, sir. Uh, so I mean, with that, uh, I would probably kick it off with uh, with a question for for Brian. Uh, I think we are eager to see what is this webinar all about about you know how securing all these remote workers from pretty much anywhere that uh, people are connecting right now from their mom's house, from their uh, Starbucks. I mean, I want to give free advertising to Starbucks, but coffee shop. <laughs> uh, so I would, I yeah, would I, I, it I, up with it. I'll, I'll, let me set it up. Uh, first of all, a, a very big thank you to uh, you, Edward, and to Tyler on the call here for setting this up. First of all, we're happy to be partnering with Eagle Tech. It's a great partnership and uh, some of some of our partnerships are just a match made perfectly. This is one of them because of your focus on trying to get uh, the security message out and really get down uh, boots on the ground and help help out uh, companies that are trying to navigate through what is right now can be best described as a perfect storm. All right, so let's go back to January 2020, and I won't I won't uh, dwell on the pandemic because uh, we're still in it. I love it when people say we're out of it, coming out of it, almost out of it, almost in it. It's it's a very confusing uh, thing. By the way, uh, Ed, you, Edward, you might want to go to, uh, I don't know if it's spotlight mode or gallery mode for the recording. I'm just, uh, you might want to do that. So let me let me set this up. Checkpoint kicked off a, uh, a war room effort back in the beginning of the pandemic that tracked all the way through. And we have, I don't know, five, between five and 10,000 customers that have come in and out of the continuum of this discussion through the pandemic among our global customers. And there were common themes. So I'll share the common themes with you and I'm gonna do it more than once today. So this won't be the first time you hear this, but let's see if this resonates with you. Number one, we overnight, obviously, we had to go remote for most of our entire workforce, which was a very chaotic and disruptive event. Um, the technology existed in some places and it didn't exist in others. And cybersecurity became a kind of um, in, in some ways was an afterthought during that beginning period. What we then saw for the next 12 months was most of our C-levels, like our CISOs, come forward and say, you know what, we need to revisit our strategies and make sure we don't, we're not gonna get caught. At the same time that was happening, came another thing towards the end of the pandemic, which all of you are part of, called the Great Resignation. I could ask you to raise your hand, but you, you're not on video, but do it anyway. How many people have heard of the Great Resignation, okay? So yes, yeah, so this is a, a very unsettling period in the workforce. It's not specific to a company or an industry. It's all, people just were restless as the vaccines became more proliferated, people became restless and are now moving around in companies. So we have high turnover and in, in, in sort of in line with that is an unbelievable demand for cybersecurity expertise, which is already in scarce supply. We have people moving around within our own industry, cybersecurity. And um, as a result, the demand is up and so is the cost of retaining good security talent. So one of the themes I'll be repeating today without a doubt is you need to find good talent. You're not gonna more than likely be able to hire it off the street. So we look at partners like uh, Eagle Tech who by far and away can bring 
very, very quickly bring that value to you. So what do we got? We got people working remotely from any device, from anywhere, from Starbucks, free ad, uh, with with uh, bring your own devices, company owned devices. Um, we've got the great resignation, so we don't have enough cybersecurity talent, even the talent that's out there, we can't afford it, we can't afford to hire them. And thirdly, we have a tremendously innovative uh, ecosystem of, of vendors like Checkpoint that are out there trying to innovate to, to d- deliver services that stop these, these exploding industries like ransomware, which by the way, ransomware is not an attack. It's a cottage industry. I'll talk more about that. So the combination of this perfect storm brings us to a point where you need fewer vendors that can cover more threat vectors across data center, cloud, mobile, across your remote users, your contractors, your part-time people, all of it, and all with less expertise, less cybersecurity knowledge because you can't afford to hire the right people. All this together sent us in a direction with Eagle Tech to deliver a simple, unified workforce security strategy that addresses some of these huge challenges. We call it Harmony, so you'll hear about it, but this isn't a product pitch. It's more about how do we look at a problem that you definitely have. And I think that's kind of that kind of sums up how we arrived at this moment. And uh, by the way, it isn't over. It's, a, it's in progress. So yes, yeah, some, and, and I could do another show of hands here. So yes, raise your hand. <laughs> your dog is sitting next to you. You're, you're at your home office. It's okay. Raise your hand, even though no one can see you. I mean, how many people are struggling with whether to go back? They were going to go back. They're not going back. They're going to be in the office less than they used to be. You were always remote. You were never remote. It doesn't matter. Whatever the answer is, it doesn't matter. We are all grappling with securing this modern workforce where the tomorrow and the day after that aren't known. And as of course, with the, the variant, we are then sent back down into this uncertain time, which we don't talk about a lot, but it is definitely the case. So I think that sets it up. Um, and, and Ed, so let me turn that around Ed, and ask you a question. I mean, okay. talk about your transition, talk about your customers. I mean, you guys have also a unique view that is less uh, vendor agnostic. You know, obviously you, you have cust- many customers that you were working with. Tell us about how you progressed within the pandemic and now trying to come out of it if we are coming out of it. Uh, well, uh, it is interesting because it, I think everybody got off guard with, uh, with the pandemic and everybody going home. Uh, you know, pretty much in- instantly uh, when everything hit. And um, most companies thought that they were prepared, uh, including uh, many companies that had remote users, but they only have probably like 5%. And it was just a minimum. And then now you have 100% of users everywhere. So the infrastructure and the dynamics and the, and the laptops uh, being purchased like crazy uh, in 2020. Uh, we experience all our clients asking us, we need to have 50 laptops and there's no inventory at, at all. So, I mean, we, we actually, what we did since we were allowed to operate uh, at Eagle Tech office, we moved all the operation of all our clients to Eagle Tech. So we ship all the equipment to headquarters here That's and we pretty much came to the spot where we're going to pretty much build the computers from the ground up from all our clients and then ship it. Uh, also, we actually have to, to acquire uh, vehicles to actually send our technicians where they were needed uh, because people were home now and there were some people were struggling. And of course, taking all the, all the mask and all the you know proper uh, procedure for the pandemic. So we uh, came uh, trying to be proactive and securing people. We were blessed in the way that we already had a relationship, a strong relationship with Checkpoint and Checkpoint came out with, with the Harmony uh, solution that back in the 2020, it had not been named Harmony just yet, but it was, it was uh, uh, pretty much all the components already there. So we started to deploy that as crazy, uh, protecting people in, in their remote devices uh, all the infrastructure uh, and all the software were meant uh, for on-premise. They needed Active Directory to work. Now people are in their homes, they don't have Active Directory. So it was a challenge installing all the security agents on, on their PCs, but we were able pretty much to manage. We did some people remote. Uh, we have our remote tools that we were able to pretty much install all the applications that we needed to secure them 
to configure the VPN, uh, which by the way, VPN, if you don't have the, the, the endpoint in your house secure, VPN is the worst thing that you can do because you're opening the door from your house viruses and threats to your corporate network. So we actually have to uh, install checkpoint on all the devices that we're going to connect to the VPN and secure them. Uh, we actually were uh, getting equipment in Eagle Tech, preparing it, sending it securely to, to, to wherever the clients are. And then we faced another, another challenge, which was that people were actually moving from DC to other states to pretty much because they, they didn't need to be in, in the yeah, to get out. They could, they could so, get out. So they did. Yeah, they could get out. So you got people in Florida now, and then now we have to serve the same clients, but with a broader <laughs> user base. Uh, we have people that were stuck internationally, so we have to support them as well. Uh, so yeah, we actually took the approach of installing the uh, Harmony email and productivity with Office 365 to protect 365. And now everybody is saving to Dropbox. Everybody is saving to OneDrive because it's very limited that you now you cannot save in your file system at on-premise and your servers. So everybody's sharing files. So imagine the nightmare that companies now have having all the sensitive data all over the, 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 the cloud. Uh, so how do you protect them? So we actually centralize in, in the clients that we have, we centralize it in OneDrive or Dropbox, which are two platforms that are protected by, by the suite that we are implementing, which uh, imagine what suite is that is. That is Checkpoint. But uh, we, are, we are actually uh, making the users to use only those platforms uh, because we know that the data is going to be saved there. Yeah. I mean, it's big challenges and you guys are, are of course, in the middle of it. Um, was cybersecurity a big priority? I mean, it's okay. It's just no sugarcoating it. I mean, I'm imagining that security itself was not number one priority. In fact, connectivity and like you said, getting files where they could be shared. And I mean, you guys obviously carried the cybersecurity flag and tried to tried to make sure that, you know, these your customers weren't impacted. But how would you rate people's priority about it during the pandemic? I would say in the first half of the pandemic, I mean, probably uh, all the way to August or September last year, security was not a concern. What it was concerned was remote connectivity. I need my people to be able to work yes. and make it happen. I don't care how, make it happen. And we were focusing, but careful. But then uh, we have companies calling us that they were victims of ransomware. And, and we we're, we'll to, talk more about ransomware. I'm going to highlight that. But uh, but I, I mean, and I and I think that that was a big the big mistake that most companies made is that they focus too much on make sure that your your guys are connected and productive without taking into consideration the big risk that you were taking, because now you you don't have that cozy office space that you can protect. We have spending years protecting on premise, years. And we have invested in firewalls and in security system that works in the in the office. As long as you're in the office, you're safe. But now you don't have any of that. Yeah. Um, by the way, your observations about first half and second half mirror ours as well. And uh, in that, of course, almost nobody was thinking about, you know, oh, my God, may maybe the bad actors are getting as smart and capitalizing, which they were, by the way, because we've been tracking. So here at Checkpoint, there's there's. The, the innovation arm that develops Harmony, which I'm gonna talk about in a minute, but there's also a, a group that's at arm's length from the rest of the company called Checkpoint Research that does nothing all day, but research trends, um, uh, you know, go underground into, into where the bad actors are on the dark web and other things, totally separate from the, the, the you know, in many ways from the uh, organization that's selling and, and, and having customers. and. Uh, the bad actors were following these trends and enterprising and innovative themselves. And now we are arriving at a point, and, I, and I'll talk about, let me, let me jump right in, if you don't mind, Ed. I'll just talk about why uh, the perfect storm extended, you know, past, past what I said, and I'll talk a little bit about Harmony, if that's okay with you. Yeah, well, uh, before you talk about Harmony, I, I wanted to show you uh, what at the second quarter 
I mean, the second half of the pandemic we had to do to protect our clients. Okay. Uh, so I want to share this very briefly. Uh, I'm going to go very quickly. Uh, if you guys want to see it again, then you can actually see the recording. Uh, but uh, pretty much what we did is that we needed to protect all the surfaces of attack. So we pretty much already have on-premise and cloud services. These, these two big one right here on the bottom, we put, we already had firewalls uh, uh, generation five. We actually had the ransomware prevention. We, all these were already done. Uh, so we already have these two fronts covered, but then we needed to add more which we actually were protecting the most vulnerable uh, asset of a company, which is the user. So we actually, with the Checkpoint Suite uh, and uh, other uh, products, we actually uh, install the next generation security agent. We actually protect their mobile devices, which we haven't talked about that, but cell phone uh, usage increased for work during the pandemic like crazy and most people are not protecting their mobile devices so we actually protected our clients mobile devices as well uh, the internet traffic is encrypted even in your mobile device and your laptop uh, because it's actually being encrypted by a vpn to the cloud uh, so it doesn't really matter where you are so we actually focus on protecting the user uh, it doesn't really matter if they are on premise or not then we jump uh, after we secure our, our user on-premise and the cloud data centers, we actually focusing on protecting the suite. I mean, Office 365, Gmail, Dropbox, Box. Uh, so we actually protected as well that. So spamming, identity theft, uh, credentials, exploitation, impersonation. So all that, we also put a, a layer on top of it with checkpoint, email and productivity suite to protect all this uh, that now everybody is, is needing it. And then on top of that, we have Eagle Tech monitoring this 24 seven. So that is in, in a nutshell, the platform that we actually are working on since we noticed that it was imperative that we took actions into protecting everyone. I'd I mean, like to everyone. talk about the top. Let me talk about the top for a second. Uh, put, put your slide back up real quick, put it back up. I want to talk about that top piece and what what it means to most of the people, uh, not only on the call, but beyond, you know, so and we'll talk about consolidating your views and harmony. We also talked about how we don't have enough cybersecurity expertise. And I think that the one thing that is missing for a lot of firms uh, uh, globally is someone like Eagle Tech to be vigilant on what's being seen. Of course, we can consolidate and we do consolidate those security events, but for most companies, the they're so busy, they don't have the right people, it's impossible to keep up with these things. And that's one of the main themes I want people to take away, which is, yes, great, great cybersecurity solutions, state of the art, um, consolidating these uh, to forensic uh, investigations if needed, stopping them in the first place. But that operation center up top is what people really need to be saying, you know what, that's where we need to be. So good point on that one, thanks. All right. Now, ransomware. Yeah, let's talk about ransomware. For, so, so first of all, let me <laughs> let me tell you what ransomware is and what ransomware isn't. And this is uh, all related back to workforce security. First, let me tell you that ransomware is a misconception. That ransomware is a is an attack. I've been attacked. I have. A, I've been. I'm, I'm a victim of a ransomware attack. And yes, uh, the end result of it is multifaceted. And I'll talk about. Uh, uh, triple extortion, which if you haven't heard of it, uh, it's a disturbing trend. And it all centers around something called leverage. And, and basically, here's the story. Ransomware is not a single attack. It's a cottage industry that has been bolstered by shockingly, disappointingly, very enterprising bad actors who are watching you, looking at your firms, uh, assessing, assessing the value. And, and understanding that most firms uh, will, if they fall victim to this, will have to pay the ransom, despite all the preachings about not, you know, don't do that. And most companies will arrive at a point, and we've been through this many, many, many times, where they will have uh, uh, unfortunately not planned well and be in a situation where they have to throw money at it in terms of a ransomware payment, hope for the best. First thing I want you to know about this is, number one, you need a partner 
to help you prepare ahead of time. It is inevitable for you. If you're on this webcast right now, and whether you like Checkpoint or whether you like Eagle Tech or not, it's kind of irrelevant. We hope you will, of course, but you should know that it's just a matter of time. And I'm not suggesting that a small business that you happen to operate or medium-sized business. Yeah, I'll, I'll update everything so that um, all the communication. And and so you can hear me, right, Edward? Yeah, Thank you. Yeah, you okay, so let me finish this. Let me finish this. So uh, it's just a matter of time. You're just, you're in their sights. And you might say, well, I operate a small business. I, I sell paint for a living. Who would care to hit me with a, with a, uh, a ransomware attack, you should know that uh, the famous, maybe less famous, Casilla ransomware attack that happened over the July 4th weekend while you were watching fireworks impacted 1,500 small businesses that didn't even know what ransomware was by way of a, of a network provider that uh, they leveraged. So uh, my point is, it's a matter of time. So what's your action plan? Well, number one, you need to be reaching out to Eagle Tech and saying, look, let's get prepared for this. So we have a choice. We don't have to pay the ransom. And let's put protections in place, like you mentioned, Edward, like like Harmony, that basically, as much as humanly possible, no, no pun intended, removes the human element from it. Stop the person from clicking on that phishing link sent to them in an email. Understanding that these bad actors know that all of us, myself included and Ed and all of us, are distracted. We're less apt to say, wait a minute, maybe I shouldn't click on that. And if we get all the way to the other end of the attack chain where a ransomware um, encryption event may start, let's stop that too in its tracks. So to, to, in order to accomplish this, you need a multifaceted strategy. Let me talk about Harmony for a minute and explain that what I've just explained to you, that preparedness, those controls, which Edward explained in his slide, which we totally echo and agree with, are required because it is not one vector. For example, you might think, well, I'm, I'll open up my, e my Outlook email and uh, I, I see a link and maybe I shouldn't click it. Well, these days, most of you are running Office 365. So that's in the cloud somewhere. And as, as Edward talked about, uh, we are securing Office 365 by way with Eagle Tech. And uh, we want to avoid presenting that, that clickable link in the first place. Just don't even put it in front of us. Keep it away from us so we don't get tempted to click it and begin a, an attack chain that leads to a ransomware attack. Let me talk about triple extortion for a minute. So Checkpoint has seen uh, our research arm, as I mentioned. We have a mid-year security report, which I encourage you to, to download and we can provide it. But basically, we've seen a massive, massive ma order of magnitude increase in ransomware as an attack vector because it is tremendously profitable. It is tremendously successful. Did you know that bad actors that set their mind to uh, attacking you can simply rent a ransomware platform, like they can partner with a bad actor who provides a platform. You know how long that takes? Minutes, hours. Did you know those, those ransomware uh, platforms operate 24 by seven help desks? So this is, this is crazy stuff, but it's an enterprising cottage industry that's profitable. Now, let me tell you how it affects you uh, quite in quite disturbing ways. And this is why you need a solution that crosses things like Office 365, your mobile devices, your endpoints, um, that provides a zero trust model where needed, that uh, provides uh, technologies for all around, no matter where you are, no matter what device you're using. Let me explain. It's called triple extortion, all right? If you are new to ransomware, and it's hard to be new to it because with things like the Colonial Pipeline, it was obviously in major, uh, major news and heightened everybody's awareness about it. But you may, you may think that a ransomware attack is when uh, devices get encrypted and you pay some money to get them decrypted and it's that simple. And what's happened is these bad actors have evolved far, 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 far beyond that. And I'll give you an example of how they have built leverage to force you to pay these ransoms if you have not planned ahead. Here's an example. Uh, the first thing that happens in any, and I say any good ransomware attack, and I say that in quotes because what, you know, you obviously realize is the opposite of that, but is the theft of data from your, from your, uh, from your assets, the, the reconnaissance and then subsequent quiet exfiltration of data out of your network that you're not even aware of, possibly till months later. All right, so customer information, uh, uh, you name it, private, personally identifiable information. And we've seen time after time data get leaked out, and then the bad actor threatens to sell it or disclose it, maybe both, if you don't pay the ransom. How about a situation where a bad actor uh, robocalls all of your customers, letting them know 
that that you are been impacted by this theft and this ransomware attack. Anyway, how about how about a stock analyst? You work for a public company. I do. So imagine stock analysts being called. Imagine the press being called, automatically emailed saying, "Hey, company XYZ has been a, has been impacted by a data theft and a ransomware attack." So my point is that you want to make an investment ahead of time in a suite like Harmony under the direction of, of Eagle Tech to make sure you have choices if you reach a point. For instance, you see an attack start, it gets stopped in its tracks. We recently demonstrated that eight ransomware attacks in, in, in quick succession that had been part of the history could be stopped at the last piece of the attack chain when the encryption begins. Um, phishing is something we talk a lot about. So. You need a strategy to combat all this in the midst of the great resignation, devices everywhere. Edward called it on the head. People are using mobile devices, which are the great blind spot, by the way. Mobile devices, endpoints, they're accessing platforms like Office 365. You need to be covering all that in order to ensure that that secured remote worker does not become the start of something that could bring any business of any size to its knees quite quickly. So that's a little bit about Harmony. It's essentially about collapsing six siloed solutions, usually different vendors, different management interfaces into a single unified secure workforce security package that would be managed by companies uh, like Eagle Tech, who can bring all that complexity together and take a lot of it out of your hands, because you can't certainly can't afford to hire the right people to do it. So I hope that helps, Ed. No, yeah, I mean, that is super helpful. And and people do not realize that uh, one of the threats of uh, ransomware is that you might have, depending on the size of your company, you might have the main actor or the brains behind it inside of your company. Now, they don't need to be a hacker. They just need to have bad intentions and then hire a hacker to do it. That's why when we had clients uh, or, or, or companies that call us because they were hit with ransomware, and they want to disclose it, I was like, hold on, because you might have the actor inside of your company. So we have to be careful how to communicate what's going on in the attack. That's why the incident response team, which Eagle Tech also do, and a partner with Checkpoint to, to do it as well, is, is not only about technology, it's about how you respond to, to a ransomware, because there is media coverage there is law, uh, I mean, lawyers that get, have to get involved if, if the ransomware have to be paid or not, if they're not, if they don't have the backups because the ransomware also targets the backups. Uh, so you have to deal with how you communicate, how do you uh, manage the media, how you manage the social media, uh, how, when do we need, you need to report this to who? Because, I mean, you don't want to just blab that you were ransomware because you might actually attract more people <laughs> because in that in that messiness you know people can see more opportunities to even do more damage so th th there is not only the the technological part but actually the strategic part on, on a ransomware and that's attack. where you guys really come in okay so you look at, a, at, a, at an industry full of solutions and i think checkpoint provides great leadership with harmony and there's absolutely no doubt this is why a company like eagle tech is required because Although we are delivering solutions that can stop it at seven points in the in the chain, there's no such thing as perfect, and there's always going to be, you know, the, uh, you know, potential for it. And by engaging a company like Eagle Tech ahead of time, you can make plans. Number one, to have the right protections in place. Number two, to be ready to have a plan in place to be ready to handle this if it happens. So it's not um, it's not a complete fire drill. I want to share one more thing, if it's okay. Yeah. You talked about the inter the insider threat, which we've known for decades has been uh, one of the prime and most dangerous threats. You look at the great resignation and you look at the disgruntlement that some employees are experiencing. And I'll tell you another thing we've seen in our research, which is really disturbing. We have seen bad actors offer to pay internal bad internal actors, so disgruntled employees, um, a substantial amount of money, especially in larger organizations, to become part of, as you said, to become part of the attack. Maybe they were good-hearted people who, you know, had to take a pay cut or things happened and maybe they're susceptible, they're in a moment of weakness and they're accepting cryptocurrency from a bad actor and maybe it's a huge sum of money, more money than they've ever even seen before. So as, as you said, planning ahead of time is key in addition to all the controls we put in place. Yeah, I mean, uh, well, you know, uh, going back in this, 
transition. I mean, people people thought that you know by now we'll already be back to normal. Now we know that that's not going to happen. We have clients. <laughs> well, is it? And is it happening? Please make no, no, it happen. I mean, let me, let me tell right. you, we have we have clients that told us, you know, in July we're going to go back to the office. So be prepared. Guess okay. what? They didn't go. No, they didn't go. I mean, they most of the employees didn't want to go back. So now they push it to November. And How are you handling hearing, this with all your all your all your clients? I mean, where do you start with that? You just is it just continuing then? We just say, all right, we keep doing what we've been doing. Yeah. So we we are actually now our model is not going to change because now we are able to support people on premise and off premise seamlessly. So for Eagle Tech to support the company, now we don't even care if you go out to your office or not. You're going to be protected no matter what. Uh, so, so for us, we actually make that decision from probably by, by early this year, like we have to have a platform that is pretty much, it does, you really don't care if they are in the office or not, because some companies will make it back to the office. Some companies will never go back to the office and someone are going to be hybrid. So, I mean, instead of having us three different solutions and struggling, let's have one solution that can serve all of those situations. And that's where we are pretty much helping companies to, to be right now, to be able to, to afford that. Uh, especially now that we, with the variants, we don't know if in the future we're going to go back to lockdown. We, we, I mean, hopefully- Why not, Ed? Why aren't lockdown. you telling everybody what they want to hear, which is we all get to go back to work as a business as usual? Yeah. It's disappointing. I mean, people, I mean if you- <laughs> <laughs> Some people are eager to go back to the office and they love to have an office and to get away from the house once in a while. Some people love to be in the house. I guess it's depending of, you know, if you love to to be and the commute. I mean, some people don't want to go to the office. It's just because of the commute. I'll like, tell you what I miss. People. I miss people. I miss everyone on this call. All you people. I wish I were with you in person because the energy level of a Zoom just doesn't do it. I will. I like to build on one thing you did say, which we hear a lot at the C level. Uh, in our in our discussions, like so the CISOs and, and such. And that is this exactly what you described. So you've hit it on the head. It's basically, again, anywhere users, any device uh, and coming and going. We no longer have any predictability on who's in the office and who isn't. So there's no more perimeter. The conventional perimeter is gone. So we have this concept of zero trust. Now that sounds like a buzzword. And it's been it's been a, a discussion point for some time. But to all on this call, you want to be opening conversations with Ed and his team about zero trust architecture, which is a very, very simple concept. And it represents a model where the user themselves are inherently untrusted. We don't trust them. And everything is based on a principle of least privilege, which if you're in cyber, or if you're even basically familiar with this, you know, has been around forever. But we finally have the ability to unify this principle of least privilege across all technologies. I'll give you an example. Um, the ability to consider a contractor, a remote worker, a fully remote, a privileged remote worker, all, even no matter how high up they are in the organization, as needing only certain privileges to prevent some of the things like supply chain attacks and escalation attacks and other things. Even when the CEO is targeted, do we have an ability to, uh, you know, in a business email compromise, to, to, to ratchet his permissions down just to what he needs. So this is a huge, huge push all around. And if it's not on your initiative radar, it should be. Uh, how can we uh, avoid having any human in the, in the pool become, uh, uh, become the, the, the purveyor of this? And we do it with a zero trust architecture. Yeah, Brian, um, and, 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 and just getting into the zero trust, uh, most people don't like to hear that because I mean, people no, they don't be trusted. Yeah, they, no, they like to be trusted. They like to be trusted, <laughs> and, and it's like, how come you don't trust anybody? And it's going to be a pain in the neck. Well, guess what? Security is not fun. I mean, it, when when September 11 happened, the security in the airports, I mean, had to be you know raised up to the level that it is today. And now people just you know get is used to go to the airport and and, and getting check out and, and all that stuff. And that's necessary because we're protecting human life and you're protecting from, from many threats from, from bad actors. Well, now the new, the, the, the new thing is cybersecurity. Now, now the bad actors are actually targeting uh, your data and they're targeting your companies and are, are pretty much, and you have to pretty much make decisions of 
well, we need to tie up the security and it's uncomfortable. But when you go to an airport or when you go to a, a, a place that is important, you, you have to follow certain securities. You have to, to, to get used to that new realm. Because guess what? Data is, is a new powerful asset nowadays. Uh, even, even, you know, regular thief. What are you going to steal? Nobody have cash. In their pockets. If you if you have with a gun, it's like give me give me money. People are gonna just I don't have any cash. So crime have moved to the digital world because that's where they're gonna get the big bucks. And Great. on top Great. of that, they are anonymous, so it's even hard to catch them. So that's why security, even though some people like it, that is uncomfortable. You know, we had issues with our clients when we remove access to the USB ports. Oh my God, you have no idea. They wanted to kill us. And I was like, we are protecting you. That's, that's, uh, I mean, there are ways we, 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 certain tools, we allow them to use some of the USB uh, devices that they have. But uh, it is, I know it is a pain in the neck not to be able to plug anything that you find in the street. But again, that, that is something that you have to consider. All right. So Ed, ask me what the greatest blind spot in cyber right now among the many challenges. Go ahead and ask me what, what it is based on okay, what well, we let me, let go me, ahead and ask me. Let me put in my, my question mode. Really? Ryan. <laughs> <laughs> Ryan, what is what I've is I've got a prop. He's gonna ask me, but I've got a prop. Go ahead, gotta ask exactly. me. Exactly. Uh what is the biggest blind spot that you see right now in the industry? The mobile device by far. Tell you the problem with mobile devices. Everybody's uh, attached to their mobile devices. Uh, raise your hand. Don't raise your hand. I know it's it's a play along. I'm trying to keep it engaging. Um, how many people uh, have a device that they that they own and that they have all their Facebook and pictures on, but that they also use for corporate access, whether it be an iPad or an iPhone, and I think, or whether it be an Android. And I think that the number of people raising their hand is approximately 100. percent Don't get me wrong. There's some companies that issue a second mobile device that are purposed and that they manage completely and that's great and then so myth number one that we all need to overcome is that if we're using a mobile device to access company resources that we are acquiescing to a level of security on that device that doesn't have to be intrusive it doesn't have to stop me from taking pictures of my kids and my cats or posting to facebook but we're going to have to accept collectively that some kind of mobile threat defense is needed. You said it at the top of the call, Edward, you don't want your device and you as a person to become a, a pivot point for someone to compromise that device and then gain access to the corporate network and do bad things, including ransomware attacks, a whole new wave ransomware for mobile devices, very scary. So my point is that the greatest blind spot, if you leave with this, is the mobile device. I mean, we've got security running on our endpoints in, in many cases that are, are doing some things we've got of course thanks to edward we've got solutions in office 365 that are protecting you in the g suite and in, in in onedrive but most people don't realize that a a security solution it's a little bit different but that secures that mobile device from a variety of vectors and of course the threat landscape on a mobile device is not the same thing as a laptop is it no or, or or in other general use cases like office 365 so checkpoint has invested tremendously we're a market leader here and it's part of harmony the mobile the mobile security uh, uh, component very easy to deploy it runs quite quietly um, i've been running it for years we have many many customers that do it, it doesn't intrude or take over the device or convert it into a a company-owned device we're not interested in any of that but it does prevent the mobile device from unfortunately which is becoming a part of these blended attacks which uh represents the greatest blind spot right now and not uh, only, yeah not only sure. protect you not only protect you from 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 the hackers but also protect you from the people trying to get your data for to marketing for you uh, I got a short story about when I put the, the Harmony mobile in my phone, I started getting messages that that uh, websites were being blocked randomly. And I was like, I'm not, I mean, at, at 2 a.m. in the morning. And I was like, I was- But you're working at then. 2 a.m. You work yeah, 24 so. hours a day. So what do you expect? You're, <laughs> you're in 28 time zones. What do you expect? And then, and then okay, I, ahead, find out, <laughs> <laughs> I find out because of Harmony mobile that Actually, uh, there was an application that I was using to turn on and off my lights that was sending metadata to sites in China. I see. And 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 then and then you know and, and well, what were they doing with it in China? Selling it, using it, 
harvesting you exactly exactly you know? so so that that's that do you guys know what your applications are doing uh when you're not actually using them with how many i'm, I'm gonna i'm gonna will. speak for the group ed no no. I don't even know. And I'm in I'm in this every day and I have no clue. And I get those alerts and I'm like, what is this? I, why would this app be sending data to to, uh, you know, who knows where? Why? So you don't know and you don't care. You know why you're distracted and you're busy with other things. But that's why you need to be not ignoring these blind spots. Um, let me comment on one more thing. There's a misconception. Some of you may be aware of a technology called MDM or mobile device management, which uh, has you know very rudimentary security, but I just want to let you know that one of the other big misconceptions around mobile security is that an MDM, which is like a Microsoft Intune or these other uh, excellent solutions that allow you to manage to some extent manage mobile devices, should not be confused with an actual security solution. So you want a mobile threat defense solution of some kind, such as Harmony, to complement whatever your MDM is providing. So. Definitely give the guys at Eagle Tech a call and say, all right, Linder said something about a blind spot on my mobile device. I'm scared because I got all my kids' pictures. Tell me how you're going to actually secure this and stop data from exfiltrating. And don't let me be a vector of, uh, of, uh, of compromise in my, in my company, but don't interrupt my fun on my mobile device because it's an extension of me. In fact, I want it surgically implanted. So it's a conversation opener. All right. Well, uh, do we have uh, time for question, questions from, from the audience? I think we do. I think we do. All right. Well, if you guys have questions, uh, at, right at, uh, at the end, uh, Eagle Tech uh, is going to be offering a link that we, you can have five-minute assessment on your posture on security on your company. And if you fill out that form, you will have 60 days of, of a trial of Harmony suite completely. And Eagle Tech will install it for you and we will show you how to, how to use it and you can use it for 60 days uh, free of charge for everybody who attended this webinar. And we're gonna put the link when we edited the video right here in the bottom. Uh, but for the people who are actually in the meeting, we're gonna put it on the chat room. So if you have any questions, now's the time to put it on the chat. So we got, there, there, there was a, a comment here by, by Cindy saying that she's hearing about quadruple extortion. Quadruple extortion, yes. Yeah. Quadruple extortion. So let me tell you about quadruple extortion. Let me tell you about n tuple, meaning any number of extortions. I challenge you, here's what I challenge you to do. First of all, we talk about the encryption process. There's one, that's one. We talk about exfiltration, there's two. We talk about robocalling customers, three. We could talk about robocalling stock analysts, four. Do you wanna invent some more? How about um, automatically posting to the social media? Five, I could keep going. How about uh, impersonating the CEO in a broadcast email? How about six? How about number seven? How about uh, uh, sending out broadcasting internally to uh, the employees in the company by way of impersonation that something is happening by way of a video? Uh, number seven, this could literally go on. In fact, I think if we, we all got a whiteboard, we could probably dream up 10 uh, vectors of extortion. So you can expect the bad actors are already thinking of these. They're already at 20, 25, you know, whatever it is. And you can expect that people that have a focused pr uh, purpose in doing so can pay a little extra on their ransomware as a service rental and buy up all of these quote unquote additional vectors, these additional dimensions of extortion to compel a company to pay the ransom, all right? So you can expect that to keep on growing, keep on going. And unfortunately, it hurts us all because it creates more and more leverage forcing unprepared companies that haven't talked to an Eagle Tech, for example, and work with Checkpoint to pay those ransoms. Well, we got, uh, that's a great answer. And uh, we we have someone here in, in the uh, asking, in my company, they are working remote and a lot of users have company laptops, but they use their phones and personal computers to access Office 365, OneDrive, Dropbox, and those devices do not have protection. So they are exposing their data. How can you help? All right, so let me talk about a difference in model. Clearly, those, those platforms are not owned and operated by companies. There, there's obviously a sign-in and a login, of course, but. So the good news is that all of those platforms have APIs that they have opened up 
to the to uh, those that wish to participate in in let's say security. So Checkpoint jumped on this years ago. In fact, not only did Checkpoint jump on it, but a company called Avanon, who we just acquired, who's been a business partner of ours for years, has made a commitment. And said, look, we're going to hook into those APIs. We're going to do the same level of threat prevention within the APIs of an Office 365 or a Google G Suite, let's say, or uh, a OneDrive. And we're going to scan documents and emails for phishing links, for malware, for uh, spyware, you name it. And we're going to stop those links before they ever reach the inbox. Now, admittedly, that inbox could be just a web page, right? So that's what it is. You're on your mobile device. You're surfing over to your Office 365 page. We're going to quarantine those emails before you ever even see them. So we're hooking right into those APIs. And, and we see more and more and more of that. Uh, coming, and that's why we made a strategic acquisition of Avanon because Avanon is a market leader in email and collaboration collaboration platform security. They were already an OEM partner of ours, and now they're part of our family. So, great question, and it's it's on, challenging. On double, on double that, yeah. uh, on double that, Brian, uh, we have the platform secure, but on top of that, we actually are using with our clients uh, how many connect, which is that platform that you have to install in your cell phone, your laptop, or your desktop to have a permanent VPN connection to a firewall on the cloud, a checkpoint firewall on the cloud. And we have requested to have an static IP for that firewall. And we have programmed Office 365 to only allow logins from that IP. So if you don't have checkpoint connect, you won't be able to log into Office 365. So that is one way. In, in your would, in your Office 365 domain. So that yeah. would not be dependent, right? It's 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 internal to the, right? That's a great solution to combine yeah, so, a multi-layered so approach. If that yeah. avoids people using their personal phone to access Office 365, because that, that is the problem that the person here is is presenting is, is I, I gave them laptops, but sometimes people have powerful computers in their house. Oh, they're going around the policy. They're going oh, around the policy. Oh, they're I accessing see. because my computer is, I have 32 gigs of memory in my home computer and the company gave me four. So yeah. they, they want to <laughs> use their home computer. <laughs> so in order to stop them for Did you just read that, my mind? Did you just read my mind? Okay, I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, so that's that's what we're doing to avoid that. And then, and then people actually have to use the corporate device to access Office 365 or Dropbox. Excellent solution. Excellent. Any any other questions that you guys want, want to do before we end up the, the webinar? Let me see someone else. Okay, so we, we got one more question. Uh, okay. And it says, uh, we move everything to the cloud. And we have a lot of data in Microsoft 365 and in Amazon Web Services. In the last couple of years, we experienced downtime from both. And I remember, you remember those, <laughs> those horrible days. Uh, so that means that the cloud isn't 100% reliable, as people believe. How can we protect our data if Microsoft or Amazon actually get a disrupted ransomware attack? Okay, I know you've handled this in real world. You take this one and I'll, I'll compliment you. Yeah, so, I mean, this is, this is good because it's one of the few people that I see asking this question that actually realize that the cloud is not 100% secure and it's not 100% reliable. Like most people think, ah, oh, you put it on the cloud and you forget about it. No, Microsoft has gone down and we have seen it a couple of times uh, last year and Amazon too. Uh, and it was, it was horrible because people were freaking out when you have everything on the cloud, then what do you do? Uh, there is not, uh, evidence that they have been ransomware ever, but that does not mean that people are not trying. Because if you if you are able to hack into those networks, I mean, imagine how successful the hacker community is going to be, and how happy all they are going to be that they actually actually were successful to ransomware one of the big fish on the cloud. So being on those clouds also make you a big target. So what Eagle Tech has done is that we actually partner with a company called Datto, 
which is backing up everything in 365, everything that is on Amazon to a third-party cloud services, totally independent from those two. So when Microsoft, if Microsoft goes down and everything is encrypted and we don't have access to anything, we still can recover your data from Office 365 100%. And we can do it probably within a day. So, it's, so it's, business continuity is, in, in, is maintained by this, this flow, but you guys have to engineer the solution. It takes not something that I'm imagining it's, it requires some services that you guys provide that. Yeah, you, I mean, we, we have to we implement that. But the, the, the point is that you are actually, you can sleep, you know, probably better knowing that if Microsoft or Amazon went down, your data is still protected and your data, you, you can still have access to the data if you need it. Good stuff. It's part of a larger plan, right? So you've got fantastic and market leading solutions from Checkpoint and there's other innovators in the space. I think we do it best, but you need a partner like Eagle Tech to be able to take a bigger picture view of this and say, let's take a look at the bigger problems. Let's see how to solve those problems that your business is facing. Not, not a technology problem, but a, you know, an overall business problem. And that's where we lean on the Eagle Techs of the world. And we're so glad to be partnering with you. So that's great. It's great stuff. All right. Well, I think uh, I mean we're gonna put I'm gonna put the link one more time in the chat. So if you guys want to take that five minutes remote workforce security assessment, it's very simple. It's just answering a couple of questions, and it will give you a, a good document that you actually can take and analyze yourself, or you can even call Eagle Tech, and we can help you analyze the the report. We don't have visibility in the report because we want your data to be private. But if you wanted us to analyze the report with you and come up with solutions to improve your security in your company, I mean, we'll be more than happy to do that. Uh, and then again, uh, you have access to the 60 day trial with Harmony Suite uh, with implementation included. Uh, so pretty much just we're open for you. We're here for you. And I would like to, you know, thanks Brian and also Tyler that uh, Tyler is in the background, but he worked very hard to make this happen. Uh, so, I mean, I think I owe you lunch, Tyler. Uh, so yeah, Tyler, great job. <laughs> Tyler's like the architect. He was the, he was the builder of this. So thank you so much, Tyler. Great job. Yeah, thank you guys. I appreciate it. This was great today. Yeah. So, I mean, and, and what a privilege to have Brian. I mean, I never thought I would have Brian in, 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 in a webinar together with me. So I'm excited. <laughs> uh so let's hear us do many more let's do many more together absolutely uh, amen to that uh all right so i don't have anything else i don't know if you want to close with uh with a short message and then we end a webinar thank you very much to everybody that came today we greatly appreciate it take the survey if nothing else to increase your awareness thank you eagle tech for being a good partner for helping people in in the real boots on the ground problems uh, leveraging solutions like checkpoint but without a doubt uh, they need your help. So great place to start and uh, good conversation opening. So thanks for everybody for their time today. All right, guys. See you. See you very Till soon. Till next time. All right. Bye-bye. All right.